We're stuck on this repeating staircase with no escape. I wonder what devil it is and what it means. Oh, she's gonna check to see if it's the same people. Nice, she's clever, working it out. I don't know if this girl is cut out for this line of work. Is she gonna make it? She's freaking out over a staircase. That's an arc she can have. Brave of him to go off alone. This is reminding me of Silent Hill all of a sudden. Specifically Silent Hill 2. So we're stuck on the same floor and it, there's like, what, a mirror image or something? What does it mean? It's a loop everywhere you go. At least we won't get separated. Why the 8th floor? Why the 8th floor and what devil would be associated with being stuck? Minimum wage job devil? Not enough boobs for Denji this episode. It's been 5 minutes and no skinship or kissing or boobs. What show even is this? It's almost like we're not even in physical space. It could be an illusion of some kind. How do we know they can even get in here? We don't even know where we are. It's <laughs> right to death. Right to the worst. About the villains getting smarter. One of the coolest things so far for me about the system is that the devil's power is based on human fear. Which you can imagine becoming a self-reinforcing loop where people are afraid of devils so the devils get stronger so people are more afraid of them. I wonder if that doesn't also affect their, their complexity and mental capacity. I also wonder how, how immediate it is. Like, could her fear in this room right now affect this devil's power? And like a lot of good power systems, I think there's a basis in reality to this because, well, I don't believe this idea that thoughts create reality directly in a sort of metaphysical sense. The way you think about things and therefore the way you act can drastically affect things for the positive or negative depending on what the actual truth of the thing is. Specifically or especially in the case of things that are unknown, one basic example would be social anxiety. So like maybe there's an interaction that goes wrong and it could have gone wrong for any number of reasons but as soon as someone self-interprets that as being their fault or something intrinsic to them that scares them, the next time around they're likely to carry that fear with them and act in a way that is somewhat defensive or maybe somewhat artificial or constructed because they don't believe or have faith in their natural personality which then will affect how other people react to them which creates a loop because then that interaction also is not optimal because people like freedom and fun and playfulness and generally like to be at ease with other people as unsatisfying as it may be a cleaner way out of that is just not taking too much stock in it and not knowing or believing the best in, in the lack of any evidence to the contrary i'm wondering if this isn't partly set up for that kind of thing but with demons <laughs> that is so messed up to put this all on her shoulders for her brother's education. I think you have other options. Just gonna throw that out there. I don't think those are the two. Oh no. Oh no. Power just loves her sadness. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You gotta rein it in a little bit. 818 on the 8th floor. They're stuck in time. They could live a whole life here. Let's look at the positive. Yeah, there you go. I'm with Denji on this one. Why are me and Denji so much on the same page? But if you're not going to die, it's all just free time. It's bonus. Probably means you're not going to starve. You got the whole eighth floor to explore forever. And the beds look comfortable. You can get married and have families and get divorced and have new families. Think of all the boobs you can touch. Denji doing his work to counteract the fear coming out of everyone else. Okay. What would that have solved? See, <laughs> she's using this time to brainstorm. I like it. If only we had internet and books. Denji and Power are the kind of people that I want in my life. I like that energy. How's your panic attack going? It could be so much worse. They could be alone. If I was alone, I'd be freaking out. They got a solid crew. Oh no, she ran out of cigarettes. Interesting philosophy. Uh -huh. Everyone is a slave to something. That unfortunately is true. Why? It was an abrupt cut. Yeah, 
that sucks as if she doesn't have massive trauma of her own to deal with having likely witnessed it and been attached to them herself life is better with a little bit of dependence i bet that has a larger significance Hey, a true bro. <laughs> You're not my friend if you don't get revenge for me. I hear that heartbeat. <laughs> this is developing into a real interesting and deep relationship. A little pushy with this. There is a certain kind of bond that this forms though, I do get it. Of course. You and everyone else. <laughs> I also started smoking for a girl. I feel like that's a really common story. I was working at a bar and I really liked one of my coworkers slash manager and she would convince me to take smoke breaks with her. It is true, I think, what she said about it being good for socializing. Especially in Korea, the smoking rooms are where a lot of the magic happens. It's one of the things that traps you into it, I think, because there's a, a bond you have immediately with people who smoke if you're also a smoker. You're part of the same, like, club of stupid. It's hard to explain, but this comes across to me. There is a kind of romance to it. I understand why she's pushing it on him. And here's the aftermath. Although they can share this last one. We gotta share it. Cigarette kiss. <laughs> why are me and Deji always on the same page? I don't know if I should be happy or sad about that. Yes, power. <laughs> what? Does that mean our cigarettes will come back bigger too? No thanks. And if you kill it, it might come back again even bigger. Well, oh, this is really creepy in, the, in my headphones. Why? Why Denji? We're about to find out who our real friends are. Who? Who's an ally? No. What a huge shock. There you go, Aki. Stepping up. Looks like it's a life of sex work for you, because this career is not working out. I don't know if they're thinking this through, though, because you kill this thing, doesn't it come back? It came back once already. Yeah, that happened faster than I thought. How do you kill something outside of this room that you're trapped in? That's a real dilemma. Do devils always honor their contract? Interesting. Not great news. You too? What a surprise. The two people who had mental breakdowns. <laughs> That's a very cold and calculated reason, but I'll take it. No, Power, no. You too? Yeah, I mean, Power could kill him and then other people could feed the devil his corpse. I mean, you have time for all this lore exposition. This devil doesn't seem that harmful. It's just kind of sitting around. He's not doing anything. We're good, we just gotta look at it. Speaking of Silent Hill, this is Silent Hill 4. What's the deal with the sword? Uh, we know what her priorities are, and it's no big surprise. Power ate it. It was power. She did it. Power did it. <laughs> Duh. Obviously. Maybe she's telling the truth. How do we know she ate it? Can you go sit down somewhere? Someone take this knife away from her. This girl has a long, long road for her arc to bravery. She's doing it. She, she's like making it so much worse. Maybe feed her, feed her to the devil. This is so hard. How do you stop being afraid in the height of this terrifying event? This looks so cool. So did he? What does he have a target on his back now? Eternity Devil. Are people that afraid of Eternity? That was so cool. That's such a great idea. What does it do? She's restraining him. Aki's the thing she cares about the most. Like smoke breaks with me.
Damn, he put himself on the line for for Denji like that. He's alright though, right? Some please for for the love of God, someone take the knife out of her hands. It's a cold and calculated explanation, but I'll take it. And there's respect in there somewhere. She can do it, she's lazy. Who else is gonna clean up your feces and your cat's feces? It's all your fault! And you need to put the knife down, <laughs> please! <laughs> I got a great idea, it's called chainsaws, yeah. Right, and it's, it hasn't been approaching this whole time. It's been watching them. They might release them, yeah. You can't kill it though. If you kill it, it comes back. You gotta do emotional damage. Jumping into eternity. Yeah, I, this is so cool. The imagery is so amazing. Oh, is it the end of the episode? Yeah, I thought that was what Eternity looked like. Oh, nice, we got an Escher painting to match the idea of Eternity. I love this kind of thing. If the thing is Eternity and his biggest fear is pain, you can maybe create like a eter eternal pain situation or something. Then you can literally create hell for this devil. And just, you know, naked power for a good measure, why not? The power hugging Denji. I'm loving these endings a lot more than I thought I would. At first I thought it might be just sort of a gimmick, but I really appreciate it. And I'm getting a lot of great music out of it. One of the things I like most about this episode is that while creating a really cool little mission and dilemma for these characters, it's doing a great job simultaneously developing this squad, particularly Aki and Shoot. I still don't know her name. Eye Patch Girl. They got a little romance going that's pretty cool. I can feel it. More than a romance. It's Romance plus just a bond that comes from mutual experience, common understanding, a lot of time spent together, shared craziness of a certain kind, and a mutual addiction, which might be symbolic of their drives. I keep thinking about the line, dependence makes things sweeter. It's a simple statement, but I feel like it ties into a lot of the, the show. At least I'm guessing. I mean, Kenny Ackerman's classic thing, right? Everyone's a slave to something. There's a lot of that going on in Chainsaw Man. We know what Denji's a slave to, obviously. Aki is slave to his emotional pain, I guess. His rage and hatred of the, the gun devil, and maybe on a, a more benevolent level, his desire not to see it happen to other people in the world. You guys filled me in on the scope of the, the gun devil's attack in the world, which was a lot crazier than I had anticipated or thought based on that episode. So definitely a worthwhile cause. But I can't help but wonder if Eye Patch Girl hasn't had her priority shifted a little bit, you know, from originally being someone dedicated to her work to someone dedicated to Aki, being someone who's constantly left behind, who is constantly misunderstood and hated for what she does and blamed for all the tragedy that's befallen her partners. She might see Aki as something like her salvation. There's no one else for her like that. And maybe the cigarette represents her desperately wanting them to share the same thinking, the same kind of addiction. These episodes have been a little bit different from the way the show started, but just as Good, just as compelling and just so much really cool really resonant character stuff happening simultaneously so for me the show just keeps accelerating it keeps getting better and better even without you know the the crazy action scenes over the last two episodes or boobs